Uh, yes, so, know why you're doing it, because you're going to question, you're going to question and doubt and wonder, like, <laughs> you're always going to feel inadequate, you're always going to feel like, am I doing enough? Actually, not always, some days you will have really okay. <laughs> be like, yes, I know why, yes, this is awesome, but it is hard, I'm not going to lie, it's hard and it's kind of scary, there's a lot of unknown, there's a lot of wondering, like, how does she compare? Yeah. Another thing I'm going to say right now is drop the mindset altogether. Public school and homeschool. Like I said before, there's no comparing the two. They are not alike. They're totally different. Totally different. There are some people who've adopted like a style of uh -huh. home that looks, mimics like a classroom setting. And that works is that with like different classes and attending separate subjects mm -hmm. and kind of following that structure? Okay. Yeah. But, like, the biggest thing I've learned is that homeschool is not, like, it's not like entering a classroom and then you have your hours of the day that you do it. It's like a lifestyle. Um, there's an opportunity for learning in everything. Um, mm -hmm. Whether that is, like, you know, baking together. Um, there's math to learn. And yeah, measurements, process problem solving you can get into a lot of that critical thinking yeah okay i like that we do a lot of our like reading and language time um like in the morning we'll sit around and so outside of our actual curriculum we do all kinds of activities but we have like a book club that we're a part of so we mm. get a lot of language and reading done outside of our set curriculum kind of thing um also operating outside of hours of school it's nice like we get a lot done in the morning um we do a lot of stuff but that's just because we've implemented this routine but um a lot of times our school like we're gone during the day and we're out doing this and that and other um activities all the time and so a lot of times we're sitting around like four o'clock at night <laughs> in the evening or whatever um and we're doing school together then, or you know, even at bedtime when everybody you can kind of make it more, yeah. But you can make it more flexible and more in tune with your schedule and what fits your family. Yes, and so that's again like another point I was gonna say, unpopular opinion, but yes, anybody can homeschool. <laughs> it might be a lot harder for some. You know, I get mm -hmm. the single working moms out there who have all shifts or jobs and they're gone all day long. I get that. Yeah. Um, but again. Once you adopt that mindset that it's not entering into a classroom, you don't have to abide by hours. You might have to get a certain amount of hours in once they get of a certain age, depending on your state. But there's ways around that. You don't have to operate on a nine to five or an eight to three. You know. Like I school. think that's such a good advice and thing to remember because, and that's what I need to get out of because I keep thinking like of my schooling of when we went to school was like eight in the morning till three. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to do it that way and I have to structure it like that. But it's like, you don't. No. And then when I think about the classes, there's so much like empty work that we just had to do that was just busy work. And I actually didn't learn a lot from it because I was just trying to like memorize and get through. I wasn't actually taking it in versus even now playing with my daughter at a very young age. I can see how fast she's learning because we're implementing it through play. And so if we go over colors or sounds, then when we see it in real life or in another book, she can connect it and see and connecting it a lot faster instead of just memorizing what a certain object looks like. Like she's understanding it and then it reminds me I'm like oh yeah I remember when I learned things through an interesting fun way that actually was interesting to me I remember it the other stuff I really don't remember from school which is awful but like <laughs> I don't I it didn't mean anything to me I I wasn't doing it for me I wasn't interested in it and the teachers didn't make it interesting it was like you have to do this or you're gonna be like punished you're you know it's a right. different mindset but and you start like hating school you start hating learning which it's you shouldn't hate learning it's fun you get to learn all these new things you get to figure out new ways of doing stuff and I like the way you put it up learning outside of the classroom because like things that are most important are like the critical thinking or just knowing measurements and language and how to talk to people how to discuss things how to have a conversation and those you can do outside so that's making me feel a little bit better yeah your goal for homeschooling should be 
to foster a love of learning so that they are self-learners and they can teach themselves, you know. Um, it's it's funny, a lot of people will tell you like, oh, I hated school, I did really bad in school. But then once I got out of school and started like learning about things I was interested in, it can yeah. help. So, you know, it's a lot of that is taking the things they have to learn. Yeah, it's <laughs> honestly, kids are gonna have to learn things they don't wanna learn. But at least when you're home, you have the freedom to kind of um, change how they're gonna learn. Um, you know your kid and you know um, like their learning styles. Um, and if you don't, this is the opportunity to figure it out. This is what yeah. I love about it. Um, I know that my daughter struggles with um, like just reading and sh like hearing things auditorily. Um, that's not her learning style. So it's hard for her to understand things just from me reading it to her kind of thing. So what yeah. we want to do is apply something kinesthetically, um, an activity that she can do with her hands to help her understand. I um, love that. Kind of like the cooking thing, you know, like math makes a lot more sense to her when she can do something physical with her hands. Yeah. I can, I can totally understand. It just makes sense when you can see things almost physically appear in front of you. Because sometimes when you hear it, it's just like a story. I struggled with spelling. It was a language barrier too. But like when people just said something to me, I wouldn't necessarily know. But when I could read it or physically see it or like grasp it, it, it becomes easier. Like, I don't know. Sometimes when I hear things, it, you know. It's just like a story, like a, a, a joke, an anecdote, where it's like, I don't need to connect with it versus when I'm actually doing something, I take it in and I'm like, oh, okay. And I'd love to discover that with my daughter. Like, what is her way of learning? Right. And you will. You'll <laughs> just, like, learning right alongside her. You'll figure out what makes her tick and you'll learn that about yourself, too. Like, that's, that's so fun. It's so fun to, like, learn right alongside them. What um, have you so learned that you're like, wow, I really didn't think that this this is the way that like I thought or connected. Was there something that you've learned that's been surprising? <laughs> I've learned a lot about, um, ironically, learning disabilities. <laughs> okay. Um, I never thought, you know, I, I wasn't a terrible student, but I wasn't great either. Um, and a lot of that was just about applying myself. And again, it's what I've learned through teaching a child who kind of struggles a little bit with um, how she learns things, if I don't break them down differently for her. And upon learning that, I've discovered, oh my gosh, I know exactly where she gets that from now. <laughs> <laughs> so I've learned a lot of stuff about that, and I've learned how to make learning more fun, the learning environment more fun. I've learned, um, the biggest thing I've learned, honestly, is about not expecting them to get somewhere by a certain age or certain mm. level, um, but to let it come to them naturally. Um, and honestly, one of the biggest things you can do for your children is just give them a childhood before you're trying to like drop books yeah. on them or do any of this, trying to teach them how to read. Let it go. Let them play and let them play uninterruptedly. Um, let them play without directing their play uh, and let them get dirty and experience things outside. Um, get them out in activities and stuff and let them see the world and feel the world before you want to teach them, you know, how to yeah. write and do math. <laughs> the things yeah. that are going to matter less. But they maybe, might like, have, yeah, they might have an easier time learning it because what they'll learn already physically and through their own play and they'll have an understanding. They might know the concept, just not know the name. And so when you do introduce finally through the book or through the learning of the course, that it'll be easier probably for them to be like, oh, like this one thing I did or this one activity or this one time we went into the hike and I saw this and I remember that and it would yeah. be an easier way of learning, mm -hmm. I would think. Okay, I like that. There's I so like much that. that they are learning and that they are picking up that you're not having to kind of force, you know, because there's going to be enough school that has to or is going to feel forced. Um, so to let whatever natural learning that can happen come to them naturally, I think it's been such a huge help for us anyway. So that said, I wanted to go kind of into, um, I wanted to talk about <laughs> the dreaded word socialization. Um, yes, let's. I'm so excited that you want to talk about this. I, I am, I'm just stoked. I'm such a big fan yeah. of yours. Yeah, <laughs> so this word kind of drives me 
nuts because um, you'll hear from anybody who doesn't homeschool, like, so, well, what about socialization? Um, and right off the bat, I just want to say, um, I, it's such a myth, socialization, that they're, that you're going to end up, I don't know what you're afraid of, like, if you're going to end up with a kid that's weird or, like, doesn't know how to interact with peers, I don't know. Um, but anyway, in my experience, <laughs> um, unless you're isolating your child from, like, everything, <laughs> you know, hiding them in a dark room alone by themselves all the day and not talking to them, they're not going to grow up to be unsocialized. Um, and the word socialize itself um, is interesting to me that people think that um, if they're not sitting down at a desk in a classroom with a bunch of kids their own age, <laughs> that they're not going to learn how to interact with other people. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Um, and with homeschooling, um, a lot of times you are involved in a bunch of other activities, but before you feel like you have to, you know, justify how your kid is interacting <laughs> and getting out and seeing people, um, just knowing that, like, you are raising them to be socialized when you speak to them and you teach them how to use their words, um, when you bring them to the grocery store and they see how you interact with a stranger, um, how to use manners, yeah. uh, just all kinds of things, and, like, how to get through.